damage from Heaviosity is a cinematic and orchestral powerhouse. Makes it really easy to make epic sounding uh, soundtracks. And let's stop that. First up, you can get damage on its own. It's about 300 bucks. Comes in at around 16 gigs on your actual hard drive. Or you can get it the way I got it and the way most people get it. And that's with Native Instruments Complete Ultimate or, or higher. Damage has actually been around for quite a long time. Since around 2011. And now it's 2019. But it's still a really unbeatable uh, sound library for cinematic, orchestral, industrial kind of stuff, you know, soundtracks and things like that. You've actually heard damage in uh, countless movies, countless television shows, countless, uh, countless soundtracks. Now, in this video, we're going to go over everything involved in damage here, look over all of the different interfaces here, and see how it works. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, you can see it's running here in contact. This is not a standalone plugin. It runs in contact. Uh, of course, Contact can run standalone, but we are running it here in uh, in Pro Tools. So here's Damage. We click the instrument here. You can see we have two folders. We have our Rhythmic Suites and Percussive Kits. Now, the interfaces are a little bit different. And we're going to go through that in this uh, video here. Open up the Rhythmic Suites folder. So you have loop menus and single loops right there. Of course, folders here of a bunch of different single loops. So you can really break things out or your loop menus, which is what you heard here at the beginning. So if I different loop here, okay. And then our percussive kits. So you can break things down into uh, kits as well. And of course our single drums. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're gonna start with a rhythmic suite and this is a loop menu. So right here, the LPS Epic Organic Full is what we're using. The interface here will be similar for your other loop menus. And you can see we have full and we have elements of that. Here's full and then here's elements and so on and so forth. All right, we'll check out some of that later on. But first up, we can, of course, just hit a note to play back either down here in contact, obviously on your keyboard, but you don't just have to hit one note. With these rhythmic suites, you could actually layer loops. So let me hold down one note. Maybe I want to add another loop to that. Maybe this one here. So I'll just hit both of those at the same time. A little more interesting. Maybe use that as a buildup. Of course I could do say three at the same time. Right, and that's a combination of that loop, that loop, and that loop. Of course, all of these are synced to, in this case, our DAW's tempo. So if I change this to 90 and play a loop, okay. Let's put this back on 120. All right, let's go ahead and get into this. So first up we have in our master effects. So master effects is of course going to affect everything here. So distortion, let me turn that off and just hear this loop here. All right, we can use distortion on that. Select your tone, your drive, and like pretty much every other contact instrument, you can get help tips down here in this empty gray area if you're ever confused about what something does. So look down there from time to time as well. So set our tone, the bass, the bright, obviously you know, the, the bass and the uh, treble there, and how much drive you want in that. This is not gonna sound great. I'm gonna turn it down. But you can really destroy stuff if you want. Then we have lo-fi. Let's destroy this a little bit in a little bit uh, of a different way. We can take the sample rate up or down. We can really destroy it like this. Pull it way down here. Add some noise, some color. And 
You can hear that noise there. Turn that off. Then we have reverb. This is, of course, again, the master effects. So all you got to do to turn this on is, of course, click the light. So pre-delay, you know, how much of that sort of initial hit do you want to go through uh, before the reverb really kicks in? Do you want it to sort of bloom out, you know, just that here? Of course, obviously the size, the damping of those high frequencies and the overall gain or level of that effect. Let's try that here. More gain in that. All right. Most people know what uh, reverb does. On to delay. Click it to turn it on. Basic things like time with your feedback and uh, whatnot. So make this uh, not quite as wide for now. Time. All right. Let's do this here. You can hear it there. Take that width way up. We'll leave the time about there. Pull up the feedback a little bit. A little more on the gain so we can hear it more. Of course, get creative with that. Turn that back down. Let's just turn it off. And of course, we have compression. Compress the ratio, attack and the release. You know, all basic stuff. And of course, again, look down in the uh, that gray area. If you don't know what these controls mean, really compress this up here. Maybe attack it really quick. So not letting those transients through as much. Maybe let them through here. Long release timer, go up to audio there if you want. And then our ratio, really compress it here. So there's not nearly as much difference in the loud and soft hits there. Turn that down a bit. All right, and of course, turn it on or off with that button. From there, let's head over here for now. The amp envelope, again, basic stuff. Hopefully you know about envelopes. I'm not gonna go too deep here, but the attack. So how quickly does that come in? Basically, you can have it sort of fade in if you want. So I pull the attack way up, for example and I hit a note here. You can hear how it comes in. Kind of slides in there. And of course, control the decay, the sustain of the envelope, and of course, the release time of that. This will make even more sense on single hits, but we have that uh, here as well. I'm not gonna mess with it too much here. All right, then we have our amp sequencer here, our loop and our amp sequencer. We can see what the loop is playing. You can switch through them, of course, just by dragging up on this display right there. And of course, it changes whenever you hit a note on your keyboard. And down here, we have our level, our pan, and our tune. So I can set this level down for this loop. But when I go to the next loop here on C2, the level returns to wherever it was uh, previously. All right, so I can pan this over, for example. You turn it up a little bit. It's panned over, go to the next loop. And of course the pan is where it was previously. So this is per loop. Maybe for this one here, on C2, I'm gonna tune that, tune that one up. And go up here, the D. And of course we could tune that or pan that differently come through here, maybe pan one loop one way. Let me hit control and click that to put that to the center. One loop one way, one loop the other way, and then of course you could play both of those back at the same time if you wanted to. All right, control click that. And control click that. Okay, so that's your level pan and tune. Basic stuff that you probably already know. On to the amp sequencer so this is basically different gating patterns that you can have and you can trigger live or by selecting these buttons within the interface so an eighth note 16th 32nd and 64th we have different patterns that you can choose from and you can also draw in your own patterns just by clicking and dragging in here so let's go to a we have this on eighth note 
And if I just play a loop. Let me take this off of being panned, put the level back up. You can hear how it's gating out. So let's change the resolution there. So you can get some glitchy style effects. And that's going to affect all of your loops here. It's not per loop in this case, all right? So this is really made for more of a live performance where you're playing on your keyboard and then you're selecting uh, these as you're, as you're playing. Change the type here so this ramps up in this case. All right, or of course come in here and draw in whatever you want for those glitchy and sort of gated sounds. On to our trigger effects here. Let me make sure this is not on, very good. Trigger effects, so again, trigger effects are more of a live performance thing, or of course you can just turn them on as such. You can see the note names are right there on the notes up here. So it's easy to trigger those whenever you're playing things in with your MIDI keyboard, or of course programming uh, within your DAW. You also have your colored keys. As you can see, these are your trigger effects. So hold down the key so on and so forth. Have several different ones here, punch, phaser, a rotator, lo-fi, glitcher. Not gonna go through all of them. They're pretty self-explanatory what they do, but you can trigger them or multiples by holding down a key or two while you're playing back. So let me just turn on the phaser, for example. You can hear that. And as long as you're playing it in, you can turn it on or off as you're going. And of course, adjust your different uh, parameters in here as well. On to our EQ and filter page. So here we have a three band EQ, low, mid, and high. You can actually choose your frequencies right here and the width of the bell, just in case you don't know what that means real quick. Let me pull up an EQ so you can see that. We'll just grab the standard Avid EQ so we'll just grab this band here. So of course that's gonna be your gain, up and down. The frequency, you're finding where exactly you want to boost or cut, and then the bell. It's gonna be a tight bell or a very wide bell. Obviously a wider bell, you're going to be affecting more frequencies. That's a visual look at that. Don't need that insert on there. So basic EQ here. And this EQ is going to affect all of our loops in this case, so turn it on. We could say boost the low, pull down the mid, and the high. Choose the frequency for each of those bands. So very low here to get a lot of boom, and that's fine there. Change the width of that bell. Right, next loop. Same EQ for that. Okay. Now some of these have per drum settings, which we'll look at later on. Of course, turn that on or off. Right there, then we have our punish knob, and punish is sort of a combination of compression and saturation. You can get some cool effects on this here. On or off, pull it up, pull it down. Simple, simple to use. So pulled pretty far down, sounds like this. Get more volume and saturation out of it. And a setting, say, around here. A little more compression. And really destroy it if you take it really high. completely different sounding uh, right there. So just dial that in to, uh, to taste. Now from there we have our filters, our high pass and our low pass. So if we choose the frequency here of say, oh, 300 or so, now we play. Of course, let me turn this on first. We're cutting out, we're cutting out the low end because the highs pass. We can make that a rezo. So it's going to emphasize around the a cut point there. Okay, same thing for our top end. Here we can cut out the top end with our low pass.
All right, might be cool to do some automation with that. And one more time, let me bring this EQ back up just for a visual look at what a high pass and low pass actually look like for those who are unfamiliar. So high pass here, put that in, put the low pass in there. So right there, you can choose your frequency. As you can see right here is our high pass. We're cutting out everything below this line. Same thing for uh, the low pass. All right, pretty simple stuff. And that's pretty much all that's in this interface here for our uh, rhythmic suite. This is our loop menu, the full loop menu. So let's move on to something else here. This is our, I believe it's rhythmic suites, single loops. So it's a little bit, a little bit different. This is down here in the industrial full and it's this patch right there. So this interface is a little bit different. Let me put this on solo here. So our keys look a little bit different down here. Our range, loop slicer, dropper. We're gonna get into that in a minute. So we can play some of this here. So that's the slices of our loop. You can hit this button right here, or this note right here. It's gonna play through that whole loop, okay? So let's look at the interface real quick here. Basically the same. So we have our distortion, as we already saw, our low fi of course, turn those on or off, these buttons, our reverb, our delay, and our compression. Turn it on or off, turn reverb on if we want. Turn that back off. Skip over to the amp envelope because it's basically the same thing here. Your attack, your decay, your sustain, and your release. You can always switch these around however you want. You see how the attack now is slower. So it kind of fades in there. All right, same stuff with our decay, sustain, and release. Again, we have level, pan, and tune. But if we play per slice here, you can see that these knobs are changing per slice. Now, what I mean by per slice is this beat here, this entire loop has been beat sliced. Okay, so each one of these, you can see up here in the interface, I'm playing a different slice. So I could change the level of one of these, the pan, and the tune, and then the next slice can have different settings. Okay, adjust that there. Let me pull this one back up and pull this back here as such. You can also click and drag in here to go to different slices if you want. Then we have this MIDI to host. So this is going to pull let me actually get rid of this here first. Grab this, put this back on clips, grab this, delete that. Let's drag the MIDI to host. And that's going to be all of these slices already sequenced for. So here in loop, all of these are going to play now, just as if we were holding down the play loop key here. All right, so I play back in Pro Tools in this case. I'm gonna play all that for us. You can then, of course, head into your DAW. If you want to edit things, you can uh, do that as such, and that's going to be, so maybe I want to play this one here, and then have it again here, or maybe have it here, and so on and so forth. Just that however you want. All right. Let's get rid of this. So that's dragging your MIDI to uh, to your host. Over here in the loop page, you can see we still have our level, our pan, and our tune there. So I can set this one down. And of course this one will be where it was set at previously. Same thing that we have right here. So these are our different slices of this loop, as you can see. As we play them, 
And in here, we have a loop randomizer. Again, always look down in this gray area if you want to know what things are. So this will set our intensity level to one. So we can control this, of course, with our MIDI controller. Take it up here. Intensity level is going to be four. An example of that is if I have the loop randomizer on. That's going to, of course, randomize our loop at different intensities. So come up to C0. And you can trigger these while you're you know, playing in your performance or, of course, just turn them on or off or program them into your DAW. From there, we have our slice freeze. So C sharp zero is going to freeze the loop at the current slice at a rate of once per beat all the way up here to eight times per beat. So select that. Just repeating that there. Go to a different uh, type here. Get that sort of glitchy sound effect, which might be cool uh, while you're playing it live. All right, put it like this. And then continue on with the uh, with the sequence there. Reverse play. That's going to play your slices backwards. So you can see it's starting from this end over here. Then our slice dropper, F0, we'll skip every other slice. This will skip two slices after each played slice all the way up to uh, skip four slices. All right, do four slices, let's play. As you can see up here, it's really skipping around. So more randomization and glitchy style stuff uh, that you can do here with our, uh, our single loops here in the rhythmic suite. From there, we have our EQ and filter, pretty much the uh, same thing we already saw, so I'm not going to really go into it here, but same thing, EQ, the width of that, and of course, the level, punish, on or off, and of course, our filters, on or off. All right, let's go on down to the other interface. This time is our percussive kit, and that's in here. And right, uh, right there, and our damage kits uh, in this case. So this is our our kits. So you can play in. You move this here. So you can play in with the sort of individual instruments now. And play in your own your own uh, sequence, your own your own drum track there. Okay, so in this kit, let's go to uh, main here. Master effects, pretty much the same thing: distortion, lo-fi, reverb, delay, compression. You can see our loop right here. It says loop. Pull this down here. So again, click and drag in here to change the instrument in this case. And as you notice down here, level pan tune, you can have different ones per loop or per instrument, however you want to uh, think of that. So turn that one way down, pan it way over here, and go to the next one. And of course, it's wherever you have that set. Same thing for our amp sequencer, do the same things that we already did uh, to that, Move that on or off. Okay, and amp envelope, same thing there as well. On to trigger effects, same thing here as well that we already saw. So of course you can hold down your keys while you're playing in. We go up here, as you can see, trigger effects. Up here, of course, just turn them on. The phaser on. And trigger effects will affect everything, not just the uh, single loop, but all of the loops that you're playing in. Of course, like I said, trigger them with your keyboard or draw them into your DAW. And of course we can trigger our amp sequencer with the red keys. So no more of that, same stuff we already saw. EQ and filter, a little bit different here. So the EQ, basically the same thing, right? So again, choose your frequencies and the level and of course the width, turn that master on. But down here we have a per drum setting. 
So now, let me adjust this again. You see the drum is on here for our A minus one, B, and different per drum. So for this drum, if I want a lot of low end, I can do that. But for this drum, turn the EQ on for that. Uh, and this one I want hardly no low end. So I'll just pull that down. All right, so that's per drum there. You can also click in here and sort of drag around if you want to change things or double click. See B3 in there. All right, same thing for our punish. Just to taste, that will affect everything, of course. So if it's on, it's going to be on for everything. And then on to our filters. Pretty much the same stuff, a little bit different. So here we have global. So the global is what we have already seen. So of course, our high pass and our low pass and resonate around, around that uh, cutoff frequency. But then we have it per drum as well. So you can turn that on per drum. So no filter on this drum. Maybe you want to filter on that drum. So you can customize per drum or per loop here. Make it resonate here. And then back off. All right, just turn it on or off per drum. So you can really set things up and customize them however you want. Now we have a little bit different again interface. Uh, down here. So now we have Percussion Studio Armageddon Ensemble. And that's in here in the Epic Drums. A little bit different looking, as you can tell. A little bit different. So again, same stuff up top. Master Effects, Lo-Fi, Reverb Delay Compression. We already know what that does. Let me put this on solo so we can hear it. So you can see in here we have different colored notes. In both of these blues, same drum. Both of the yellows, same drum. Both of the blues, same drum, so on and uh, so forth. So that can make it a little bit easier whenever you're using your keyboard to, of course, you know, play things in and, and record. Now the amp envelope is slightly different. Here we have all. So this is going to be obviously all. So again, you can pull that attack way up. It's going to slide in, in this case. Maybe decay real fast. Release it. No sustain. It's going to cut off. Put that back up. But then we have close room and hall for this interface here. That's because we have access to the three different microphones. Our close, our room, and our hall. So if I solo our close, that's the close. I do the room, and of course the hall. You can of course use these faders here to adjust the sound of each of those microphones, get just the level of each that you want in your mix. But back over here to the amp envelope. So here we have different envelopes that will be in relation uh, to the main envelope. So we can change the close, the room, and the hall and have different uh, different envelopes for all of these. So if we're on the room, for example, let's put this on solo. So I can adjust the attack. That's going to be uh, relative uh, to the to the main channel, to the all channel. Okay. So I can make this one slower. Put the attack up even higher there. So now that one kind of slides in, but on close. It's still hitting, you know, right whenever we hit that drum. Now this this fader looks a little bit different, or this knob looks a little bit different. Here in the middle is actually 0%. So you can go negative values to move that forward in relation again to the all, or of course, positive values to make it, uh, you know, later on. Okay, you hit control, click, put that right back in the middle, and go back to room. So you can really uh, adjust your sound however you want with this envelope. So again, maybe you want the hall and the room to have slower attacks while the close is hitting you right in the face. 
It's a little bit different. Control click, put that back. Control click, put that back. Okay, same thing, of course, with your decay, sustain, and and release. Now back over to your master mixer. Obviously, solo and mute each each of those channels. However, you want. Adjust the volume levels for each of those microphones. But then you have this purge that's going to remove the microphone channel uh, from this instance here. So as you can see right now, they're all loaded up. And it's about 304 megabytes. I remove the hall, just purge that, drops down to about 203 megabytes. And of course, then when I play something, we're not going to get any of that hall channel in there, no matter where I have my fader at. You can always pull the uh, channel back in, just turn purge off, loads right back up. All right, down here we have tune. So I can tune this drum down. Of course, when I hit this note, C sharp one and C one, the tune stays exactly where I put it because of course this is the same instrument. So go to the next hit, the tuning is different. So I can tune that one up. So this is per drum, all right? Control click and control click. Then we have key sense. At a setting of 100% means you have full control over the dynamics of the drum, whereas a setting of zero means every note is going to play with the loudest dynamics, no matter the velocity of the incoming note. So right now it's on 100%. And what you might not know about contact is these keys here are actually velocity sensitive depending on where you click them, okay? Obviously this applies to actually hitting a key on your keyboard, but in contact, if I hit down here towards the bottom, that's a high velocity. If I come up here and click, it's a low velocity. So that's our dynamics. If this key sense was down, even if I click way up here where it would be a soft velocity, or down here, it's the same exact velocity. So that's what key sense does. Of course, it's going to affect any MIDI notes that you have programmed in Pro Tools or whatever DAW you are using. And of course, if you're playing on your keyboard. And turn that down. No matter how softly I click, it's the full, uh, the full velocity there. All right, onto the stage. Turn that on or off. Now the stage, we can set our drums wherever we want in this stage, okay? Just by clicking. So this drum here, our monster drums, is currently in the middle. If I move it forward, sounds closer, more of that close mic sound. If I move it way back, what if I move it to the side, way to the side? Obviously it's going to be weighted uh, to that side. So this is what your, uh, what your stage is for. And it's per drum. So you can come in here and set up your stage uh, however you want, like you would, kind of like you would in uh, an orchestra, right? You can turn it off, off the stage anytime you want. It won't affect things. So even if I had you know, this way up here to the side, doesn't make any difference. Turn it on now. And of course it does. You can reset, that's gonna put everything to the middle. You can alt or option key click and assign all drums, but that doesn't work here in Pro Tools because Pro Tools eats my, uh, eats my alt key. So if I hit alt and click, of course, it will put that one to the center in this case, but everything else is still spread out, all right? But in other DAWs, it'll be a little bit different or if you're running it in standalone, okay? If you get things all messed up, just hit reset, that it will put everything to the middle. All right, so that's your stage onto the EQ filter. Pretty much the same thing that we have already uh, seen. Basically, we have a master, which of course is going to affect every hit here. Or we can do per drum as well. So if I just want more low end in this drum, dial that in, the width, the frequency that I'm pulling up, of course. But this drum here, maybe I want less low end. Of course, I can pull that out pull out the top end or pull in top end uh, for this drum. 
All right, so that's per drum. Turn those on or off, per drum. And of course, master on or off for all of the sounds. Same thing for punish. You already know how to do that. Dial it in. That's going to affect everything. And our filters, as we already saw previously, we have a global and a per drum as well. So just that drum have a different setting than this drum. Okay. And then global obviously affects everything. Next interface. Now this one is a percussive kits hybrid effects and it's the damage hits MW or mod wheel. It's a little bit different. Most of the things are the same uh, between all of these, but a little bit different here. All right. So solo so we can hear that and see that for our red keys up here for our trigger effects in this case. This is a great kit for all of those, you know, those uh, cinematic kind of hits. If you're making a trailer or something like that. All right, so master effects, not going over this because we know what it does, right? I mean, distortion, lo-fi, reverb, uh, delay, and compression. This again is master effects, so it's going to affect uh, everything. Over here on our amp envelope, slightly, slightly different. So here, amp envelope, we have hit, and then we have tail. So we can have different settings for the hit. Turn this down a little bit. The hit and the tail. Attack the tail differently, decay it differently, uh, sustain it or not, decay down, release down. Pull this up here. I'm gonna pull this up. And that's the tail. Okay. It's, it's, this is a really cool kit. You should definitely check this one out. Again, this is in O2 here, percussive kits, and then our hybrid effects kits, or hybrid effects hits, and then down here to the hits MW for mod wheel. Again, if you look at this screen right here, I pull the mod wheel down, it changes that tail. So we're pulling that way up here, or way down. And pull it pull it in, you can hear it. So adjust that with your mod wheel. All right, same thing for the hit, of course, as we already saw how to adjust the uh, uh, the hit there with our uh, amp envelope. So now it slides in, of course. And this is for everything in this kit here. Slides in versus coming right on. You can make whoosh sounds really easily with your uh, amp envelope here. Right. All right, so on to our tune and our key sense. We already know what key sense does. So we don't really need to go over that. But then we have tune. So I can tune this up or down. Maybe tune this one up. But then the next hit, of course, can be tuned differently. So this is per, uh, per hit or per instrument here per sample. In the mod wheel, pull in that tail. Or pull it down. All right. On to trigger effects. We already know what this does. I'm not going to go over it again. Obviously, it's the same exact thing. Click your keys while you're playing in. Program them in your DAW, click them to turn them on, do multiples if you want. That's with the glitcher, the lo-fi, and the rotator on. Sounds obviously much different. Okay. And EQ and filter, we already know what all of this does. So we have a master, turn that on or off. 
Master, of course, affects everything, so low end in everything. If I pull this up, that's going to be more low end in everything, obviously. If I do per drum, you can have different EQ settings uh, per note there. All right. Of course, turn that on or off per drum. Punish, same thing, affects everything on or off. Adjust to taste. And then for filters, we have global and per drum as well. So if you have too much low end in just one drum, you could you know, dial out some low end in one drum. Make sure you turn it on, of course. And then have low end in everything else or whatever you prefer. All right. So that is basically all of the different interfaces. Damage is great for creating epic soundtracks, you know, orchestral scores, cinematic scores, all of that cool stuff. So now I'll run through a few of the instruments here. Come in here, rhythmic suites. So you have loop menus, of course. We'll just do an let's do an element of industrial here. Just look at that real quick. So here's an element of it. So of course in contact, you can layer several of the elements and play them together or play them differently, however you want. Now if we look at the full, pull the full in here and play that. So it's all of that stuff already layered, you know, on top of each other. Right. Get rid of that. Come back here and go to single loops. You have a bunch of single loops. Again, we have the full and go in here to single loops. Let's grab this one here. And in this case, as hopefully you remember, here's our loop and all of the slices. So we're playing all of these different slices or play the full, the full loop there. Okay. Or we can come in here to the elements of the single loops. And so here's a kick, 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 snare, 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 percussion, hats, metal. I just grab this kick here, throw this in. We have much, uh, much less to actually play, of course. Right? So here's the the loop is just the slices in this case of the of the kick. So again, you could layer several of these, you know, kicks and snares and and hits and metals and all kinds of stuff if you would prefer to set things up uh, like that. It's a very versatile, uh, very versatile instrument. Damages. Of course, we have our main here, just things with your master effects and of course the EQ and filter as well. back here and percussive kits again go to metals and hi-hats here's sheet metal for example spring drum solo that so we can actually hear just that So of course use that to uh, add in to things, make a creepy, you know, creepy sound if you're doing a score or something. It's an oil drum. Let's look at this real quick. Get rid of that. All kinds of stuff in here. You have ethnic drums. Let's go for tribal drums here. That load up.
bunch of stuff you can do with damage. Of course, using your percussive kits, using your loops, using the single loops, using the slices uh, of the loops. A lot of stuff you can do here. Epic organic drums. Drums and metal. Here's a studio drum kit, which is pretty sweet, actually. It's a great kick. make a metal song with that, you know? All right. And let's go back to the rhythmic suites and the loop menus. These are freaking awesome, especially the full. Pull this in here. Check out a little bit of this. Engaging that amp sequencer there. Of course, we have our, our trigger effects. We can engage as well with our keyboard. Pretty cool stuff you can do, right? Let me layer some of these up here. Damage. You know, that's why damage has been used in so many uh so many scores, so many TV shows, because it just sounds you know fantastic here. Epic tech, we'll go with the full. Of course, you can do the elements of it as well. Then we'll wrap this up. Man. favorite one here, the Epic Organic. Back in here to our percussive kits. 
the hybrid effects. And let's pull this one in, in here, the hits. Of course, you have your impacts, your tails, a damaged piano, broken pianos, dark impacts, exploding cars, bunch of stuff in here. Come down here. Let's grab um, this exploding cars too while we're at it. Then we'll wrap this up. Solo this one here. Make sure I have this on Omni so I can get input. Now this kit right here is great for emphasizing things. You can easily make, you know, logo drop-ins, for example. Or of course, heighten the intensity, you know, pump things up. Of course, either in a full loop or obviously on their own, they work just as well. Pull that tail up, you get pretty crazy. I mean, that's an intro for a logo of a TV show right there. And don't forget your mod wheel, especially for this one here, your damage hits MW. Let's look at exploding cars real quick. Put that on Omni. grab broken piano why not solo that make sure this is on omni so i can get my keyboard I guarantee you've heard that sound in at least one TV show. <laughs> so that is damage. Again, pick it up at, uh, you can get it by itself at Heaviosity, or preferably, because it's just so much cheaper overall, is just get Complete Ultimate, or you can get the new Complete uh, Collector's Edition. And of course, damage will be included in that. Damage is what you want if you're looking for percussion to take Epic to a whole new level.